Hi everyone, Joe for Jaspi's CaseBreaks.com coming at you with a uh, half case break of 2022 Bowman Draft Baseball Sapphire Edition five box random team break number seven all all teams and all card chip. Now, if you're one of the first 16 spots who purchased a spot, you got a chance at an early bird spot. So here's the first 16 right there, and let's see who gets the extra spot. Let's see who gets the worm. Let's roll it, randomize it one and a five, six times. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And it's Eric Horton, the early bird that catches the worm. All right, so we'll put early bird next to your name right there. And now let's run the randomizer. All Again, all 30 teams are in. And let's roll it and randomize it five and a three, eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. After eight, we got Tristan down to Chris. Five and a three, eight times for the teams. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eighth and final time. After eight, we got the halos down to the strobes. All right, here's how it shakes out. Tristan with the Angels, Wade with the Phillies, John with the Pirates, Tristan with the Padres, Jose with the Blue Jays, Joe with the Mets, Rob with the Orioles, Carter with the Royals, Joe with the Brew Crew, Raymond with the Braves, Eric with the Cubs, Steve with the Yankees, Octavio with the Cardinals, Ed P with the uh, Rockies, Paul with the Rangers, Chris with the Red Sox, Raymond with the Tigers, Mark with the Nets, Eric with your early bird spot, you got my Dodgers, Harry with the Mariners, Wade with the Giants, Michael with the Diamondbacks, Joe with the Rays, John with the A's, Jose with the Twins, Chris with the Guardians, Wade with the Marlins, Joe with the Reds, Rob with the White Sox and Chris Butler. We got the Houston Astros. All right, let's sort by team. And we're going to pause the video. We'll, give it a, uh, we'll open up the trade window. When we come back, we'll see if there's any trades. Then we'll have the break. So stick around. BRB. All right, welcome back, folks. No deals were done here on a Sunday, the 26th. Random Team 7. Half case from a fresh case. Second half of the case loaded up already. Tristan with last spot mojo. Padres. Good luck. All right, let's see what we got in here. Here's the five boxes back there. You can see them on the top camera as well. There's another five boxes right over here. We're going to roll the die, a little nice little Dodger blue die. One, two, three for the back five, four, five, six for the front five right here. And it's six. So we'll do that side, and this side we'll save for break number eight, which could be uh, later tonight. And at least get in early, so you can be an early bird and give yourself a shot at a uh, at an extra spot. All right, good luck, ladies and gentlemen. Now there are there has been some uh, some spring training action, ladies and gentlemen. It's finally happening, and one of the big news of the spring is Manny Machado being locked up. Three hundred and fifty million dollars for eleven years. I don't know what the terms of the deal is, but sources are saying that deal is being finalized, and um, I suppose.
because uh, he said he was going to explore free agency this year. And the Padres, apparently flush with money, are like, yeah, let's lock you up. Which is making a lot of other quote unquote small market teams look bad. Because they're like, hey, wait a second. Isn't, aren't the Padres supposed to be a, a small market team? The truth is, most teams can spend money like that, they just choose not to. All right, our first parallel is 60 out of 99, Averson Arteaga. For the Giants, that'll go to Wade in San Francisco. And we've got 16 out of 20, Ivan Melendez. Nice one from Michael in the Diamondbacks. Nice start. Next box. Rex saw a meme where that says Aaron Rodgers come out of his darkness retreat, saw his shadow, which means 12 more months of no Super Bowl. Wow. Shots fired. I wonder how many times Aaron Rodgers himself has seen that meme. You think his friends, like, Send it to them. They're like, ha, look at this, man. Just to, just to screw with their buddy. I know I probably would. I think it was ESPN or The Athletic who did like a... Or maybe some other publication who did like a little piece on a uh, on the actual darkness retreat itself in Oregon. And uh, it actually looks quite uh, quite pleasant. I wasn't entirely sure what was supposed to be involved in that darkness retreat. Here's a Kumar rocker for the Rangers, Paul. I wasn't quite sure what it would actually look like, but it it kind of looks like uh, it kind of looks like a, a Lord of the Rings Hobbit dwelling. And here's a yes and a Morabel, another Ranger, seven out of fifty, another Ranger for Paul. It looks kind of cozy, actually. And here's a Mason win, 65 out of 99 for the Cardinals. Octavio with the Redbirds. I suppose maybe if you were into, into Hobbit cosplay, that might be a place to, uh, to go. And, uh, you know, do like a photo shoot or something. If you're into that sort of thing. Now, I know there's not a, a lot of new rules in Major League Baseball this year, some of which you may or may not like. I think most of them are not going to be, you know, are not going to be that annoying. I think we'll all get used to it. But it will be annoying if there are walk-off time violations which happened in a spring training game on Saturday, I think. We can't do that. Uh, 
uh, you mean the pitch clock, right? Not, not the pitch count. Pitch count, I think. I think some, some starters might, might say they don't like a pitch count on them. You mean the pitch clock is what I think you're trying to say, Rex. Two different things. But yeah, bases, whatever, you can't throw to a certain runner X amount of times, that's whatever. You know, there have been even arguments that the bigger bases aren't really going to make too much of a difference in terms of soul and base percentage anyway. Blah, 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 blah. The pitch clock itself actually really doesn't, doesn't matter too much either. Here's Joe and the Reds. But the punishment that's there for a batter violating the clock is they can get a strike called on them, which I think, I think anytime you put too much power into the hands of officiating always becomes an issue. There's one out of 25, Henry Williams, third round pick, one of the Padres, Tristan. You know, and so I don't know. You can't. I mean, I hope major. I hope major league baseball gets to a point where you know they tell umpires or the umpires themselves are like, "Listen, we can't have a game called. We can't have a game called on a uh, on a pitch clock violation. Right? That can't decide the game." Is this pitch clock going to be in the... I can't imagine this pitch clock would be in the postseason, right? The postseason is the only time where Major League Baseball probably wants longer games, so more advertising money. There's a uh, Tamar Johnson... One of the pirates. That'll be for John. Yeah, I don't mind the. Yeah, I don't mind the clock itself. But then I think the 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 punishment for that, especially at, at a crucial point of the game like that, where a game is literally decided by a clock, something that 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 doesn't exist in Major League Baseball, a clock. Doesn't exist in Major League Baseball. Here is Yankeel Fernandez for Ed P and the Rockies. That'll be the 99. This is Benny Montgomery, 35 out of 50. Rockies, that's for Ed. Yeah, be, that's no more of that, Steve Birch. The no more Garcia Pars of the world would not survive in today's uh, in today's baseball. I can't wait for to hear some commentary from him about that. I think he's still with the Dodgers Sports Network, the Dodgers Network. So he does a lot of some color commentary in the booth, and will do some studio work as well. So maybe I'll catch him sometime talking about it. It'll be interesting to see. There's Elijah Green. Mark Russo, Nats. But I think this has been in the minors for a little bit. So I think I think the minor leaguers probably, you know, the younger players coming up are most likely not gonna have too many problems with it. But I think the I think the existing players though, I think. I think there I think there are gonna be some some players that are gonna have a problem with it. Again, I don't mind the I don't mind the idea of the clock itself, that's fine, but 
The idea of the stri a strike being called, okay, I'm, I'm even okay with that part, but they got to be like, ums have to be like, I don't know. In the seventh, eighth, or ninth inning, either it's a hard rule or just a rule internally, an unwritten rule that you can't really just call those can't really call something like that in such a crucial moment of the game. There's already been a scuffle with the Cardinals manager in that? Oh, good. yeah, I saw that too. Handshakes being refused. I don't know what's up with that. And there's Judd Fabian. So now, Rex, what happens at the end of a Cardinals game... With that ump, if that ump in a very crucial moment of the game decides, oh, the batter was taking too long, strike, you're out. It was two strikes. In a crucial point of the game where maybe the hitter was, there's runners on base, you know, maybe the hitter was out of the box trying to get some signs. Mm, imagine that. There's Judd Fabian, your second round pick for the Orioles. It'll be for Rob. Or maybe that's what baseball wants. Here's Cutter Coffee, 12 out of 15. Boston Red Sox, Chris Butler. So it'll be interesting to see how the storylines play out. I mean, they, they got us talking about it, so maybe it worked. I'm Joe for jazbeescaserace.com. That was Bowman Draft Sapphire Edition, Random Team 7, second half in the store right now, jazbeescaserace.com. Again, I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.